hello everyone and thank you for joining us for the first webinar in our spring series brought to you by the EdTech faculty at Canisius College. My name is Lauren and I am the Associate Director of Graduate Admissions. Throughout the webinar, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have using the Q&A box on your screen. We will also save time at the end to answer any additional questions. Now I'll hand it over to Ron so that we can get started. Okay, thank you so much, Lauren, for helping us today. Uh, hello, I'm Ron Kotlick. I'm one of the uh, faculty members of the EdTech program at Canisius College. So uh, we're here today to hopefully give everyone some really easy, quick, simple tips uh, to kind of help you, you know, facilitate what you're doing now at home. I imagine all of us now are working from home, teaching our students from home. Uh, so hopefully this will be a great experience so you can kind of take some things away from today uh, to use with your own students. So quick little bit about me. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm a teacher here at the, at the college, a professor. Uh, we teach programs in a master's program, an online master's program, where our students actually learn all about ed tech. They get a master's degree in ed tech, and they even get certified as ed tech specialists. So uh, it's kind of fun because we have teachers who are kindergarten teachers, science teachers, math teachers, social studies teachers, and all of them are getting this master's in ed tech to fulfill their professional certifications uh, for New York State. But that's just my part-time job. My, my full-time job is I'm a teacher at Clarence High School. So I put the Clarence uh, symbol up there. Uh, I've been there for about 18 years now. I teach history. Uh, and my students are very engaged with technology. And uh, so for me, the transition to teaching it at home online was an easy one because we, we, have, we do so much of this on a daily basis. But I know that's not the case for a lot of us. So we're going to talk today about screencasting and then we're also going to talk about a great tool called Flipgrid and the reason why we can kind of put these together is that they're really both uh, great for video. Uh, I'm working for a home so I'm sorry my our grandfather clock is going off right now so that's not too distracting um, but they're both engaging video with your students and uh, you can do this in a ver m number of variety of, of uh, ways. Wait, wait to it chimes four there we go. It's four o'clock. All right. So we're going to start off. Uh, if you want to use this Google Doc, I put a QR code right here at the top of this Google Doc. If you want to use your phone to scan that QR code, uh, that Google Doc will go right on your phone. If you're working from a PC right now and you actually want a copy of this Google Doc, uh, go to tinyurl.com forward slash screen flip. Okay. So tinyurl forward slash screen flip. You can keep this Google Doc, and I will update it, and it'll be like kind of a live document that you can always use. And so hopefully you can use it right now during our presentation, and you can also keep it, because I embedded a lot of videos in this Google Doc that go into even more depth than what we're going to do today. So you can always refer back to those when you like. Okay? So uh, let me just kind of scroll up a little bit. hope everybody's okay with this. So tinyurl.com forward slash screen flip. And then that's the QR code, okay? That's the QR code that you can use to access it as well. If you want to get a hold of me, that's my email. Uh, feel free to uh, touch base with me anytime you like, all right? So what is a screencast? Now, at your own time, if you want to click on this, it's actually a video that I went through some more detail. But a screencast is kind of almost what I'm doing right now is um, right now I'm actually recording my screen. Uh, I'm recording with a microphone, I'm recording, I got a webcam set up, and I'm recording my screen and making a video, which I can use for a number of, of useful aspects with my students, right? Uh, so right now I'm going to record this whole entire webinar so that you can have it later if you want to go back and view it, which is, which, which is great. Uh, you can do screencasting for any any number of aspects in your own classroom. Uh, if you want to like screencast directions for something, which is going to be really important for us now, right? Working from home. Uh, if you wanted to screencast reading an aspect or going over different math problems, anything you can imagine, anything you could bring up on your screen, you can record with audio and embedded video to really make an engaging environment for your students, whether it be directions, whether it be an assignment, and students can actually make their own screencast. So it's kind of a nice, really easy, fun tool to use, and I use it all the time. Now, um, you can make screencasts right now that are live, and I've done it a lot with my students, and I'll show you some examples of that later. Uh, sometimes if I'm in the classroom and I'm actually giving an overview of something, I actually might record my, my classroom live, and then I'll take that screencast, post it to our YouTube channel for our class, and then students can go back to that at a later time. It's great if students are sick for any extended period of time or absent that certain day. They can go back and view any part of my class content for later use. 
Now, for us teaching at home, this is going to be really essential. I mean, how am I going to give directions to my students? How can I show them how to do something? Screencasting might really, I think, is one of the, you know, the best tools you can use that make that a really easy process for you and for your students. All right. Um, you can also give feedback on assignments. You know, maybe you're your ELA teacher or you're a science teacher and you're going over a lab and you want to give feedback on an assignment. Well, how are you going to give feedback now when you really can't see your students, right? Yes, you can schedule a meeting like through Zoom or Google Meet, but what happens if you just want to make a video where you talk through an assignment, give them feedback on what worked well for them or what didn't work well. That's another great useful, uh, usefulness of screencasting. All right. So the first tool that I'm going to talk about is a tool called Screencastify. I'm going to kind of start off with the, I think this is the simplest tool to use to make a screencast. I think that's essential for those of us who are new to this. So Screencastify, right here is actually a link to Screencastify. Um, it's actually a Chrome extension. So this will actually install right on your Chrome browser. And you, I had the little extension right there. There it is. So what does that mean? Screencastify only works in Chrome. So you have to use Chrome on your PC, on your MacBook. If you're a Chromebook user, you can definitely use this. All right. Now, I am not going today get into mobile device screencasting. Um, that's a kind of a little more of an advanced topic. And if you're an iPad user and you want to record your screen, there are applications to do this, but it's actually not going to talk about that, that today. So I'm talking about kind of the simplest ways to use either on a PC, a Mac, or certainly on a Chromebook. All right. So mine's already in Chrome. Yours will probably say install in Chrome, and then you can install this on your browser. And once you've installed it on your browser, especially if you're already logged into Chrome, it will always be there. It will be there on any device that you log into Chrome with. So anytime I go to a different Chromebook, I go to my Chromebook, I go to a PC, it's always there, which is really, 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 really nice. Okay. So um, my school district uh, was really generous uh, this past week, and we actually bought the unlimited version. So what is that? What does that mean? So let's actually go to the uh, Screencastify website. So the the free version now, they've actually just changed it. And what they've done for the free version of Screencastify is that they've given you all the tools to make screencasts. You can edit your screencast, you can cut them down, you can embed, you can make, save them as MP4s, you can do all these great things. The only limitation on the free use of Screencastify is they cut it at five minutes. At five, around, around the four minute and 50 second mark, you're gonna get a little countdown, it's gonna say you're almost out of time. You got to stop your screencast. If you need to go on, you got to start another screencast. So that, that's okay. You can send your students multiple videos, but the unlimited version cuts that all out. There is no um, um, cap on how long you can make your screencast. So I think it's nice, especially now that we're using this a lot more than perhaps we were in the past. So that kind of gives you the overview. So um, the free version is great. I use the free version for years. Um, if I had to make multiple screencasts, I just made multiple screencasts. But if you want to actually get into it, um, you can actually go in and um, the pricing is actually not too bad for the uh, the, uh, the uh, school version for educators. Um, it's about, you know, fit unlimited, uh, one person per year. I think this is the school. Oh, no. Nope. School education discounts three dollars per year um, for you as a teacher to use this. But again, the free version's nice, and I use it forever. Um, so you can kind of do some nice things with that too. Okay, so you can kind of see the uh, the uh, comparison there. All right, so how do you use this, and why would I use this, and how can I use this with my, my own students? Let me just kind of move this down here a little bit. It's kind of getting in the uh, in the uh, way. So what I'm going to show you now. Um, this is one of our Kinesha's Ed Tech courses, and I use this with my Kinesha students, and I use this with my high school students. And what I always do is I start off my online course for a week in a, in a, a module. So right now, we use Schoology. Uh, I use Schoology both at Clarence, and I also use Schoology um, at Kinesha's College for all of our courses. Schoology, most of you are using Schoology. It's a great tool for K-12, through so we wanted our graduate students to also use Schoology. So if we're in a module, I'm going to go to like module two. We're learning about different online learning. Ironic, I'm teaching a course right now, Kinesha's, on how to use online tools and how to create online courses. So our students in this course are loving it because they're using it now every day with their own students. But we always start off our module with an action sheet. And this action sheet, what I do is it's a Google Doc where I clearly explain what the expectations are for the week and we go over what's gonna happen, but I also make a screencast of it. And it says, watch this. So students can now click on this and they can now watch a screencast of that whole entire direction sheet. So there I am, I'm talking through it. 
Hello everyone and welcome to uh, week two. The I bottom know, there. Uh, week one is almost feels like it's just beginning with and, our uh, uh, first discussion right there, due. I'm making this video on Thursday, so it's around night Friday anyway, the, uh, the 13th. I'm not for a while. Um, I know there's soon. a lot of uh, you know, right. questions. So I'll just pause that. So that's, I made a screencast of this whole entire Google Doc, right? I went over all the expectations, what we're doing, when it's due, where to turn stuff in. I went back and forth so you can like record one tab, record your whole desktop so you can go back and forth to different tabs. You can go back and forth to different programs. You want to show them a different program. You can do anything you want. Um, and then it makes a video. So let's just do an example. So I'll show you this. So here's that, that this action sheet. All I do is uh, click on this and I have it all set up. The first time you open up the extension, it's going to ask you to allow your microphone, to allow your camera. And now I got some options here. So I can just record a tab. I can record the whole desktop, which means no matter what I do on my screen, if I leave Chrome, I go into a program in Windows, I go into a different program on my Chromebook, it will record all of that. Or it can record just the webcam, and that's actually a nice feature. If you want to give someone just some feedback, and you're not actually showing them anything on your screen, and you just want them to see you, you can just record your webcam only. It's a really easy way to uh, do that. Now, there are some settings here, which I, I, I can show you uh, while before I get into all of this. So like this recordings uh, tab, this saves all your recordings. Everything is uploaded to Drive. Super nice, super easy. If you're a school that has a Google Apps for Education account, that means that you have unlimited storage in your school drive account. So you can upload as many videos as you want to a drive and share them right out from drive and there'll never be a problem with worrying about, you know, uh, limited storage space. All right. Gives you some of your options of how you want to set up uh, your recordings and you can go through all this later. It's going to go to Google Drive, do how you want your notifications. Keyboard shortcuts are nice. I don't have it set up on this PC because I use different programs on my PC for screencasting. They're a little more advanced. But on my Chromebook, if I hit uh, uh, Alt-R, boom, it just pops up. It, it records. And I hit Alt-S, it stops it. It's super easy, nice, easy workflow. So you can kind of set up your, um, you know, different aspects. So it's really kind of nice that you can like do all of that. Um, there is an editor now, which is, this is part of something that was brand new. There's not a lot of options in the editor, but what you can do is trim, cut the beginning or cut the end off of it. This is brand new now for teachers who are teaching from home, your classroom resources page. So really some nice things. I said my recordings, you, you can go to this and you can see all the recordings that you've ever done. And you could also age yourself because if you've done this for many, many years, you can keep on going back and say, wow, it looked a little different back then. But anyway, um, so this will take a little time to pop up, but I use this a lot as you can see and boom, it just goes on and on. All these screencasts, me in there, different screencasts, slideshows, unbelievable. So um, I use this all the time as you can see and it, you always have your stuff here for you, which is really, 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 really nice. Now, so let's make a screencast. Okay, so uh, let me go to this page again. So I, I just click on that little ex extension, really easy, and I press record. And it brings up your face down here, which is interesting because it's using my other um, camera from my PC. I have two cameras going right now, so I didn't interfere with each other. It gives you some, if, what, what window you want to actually record. You can select that, you hit the window that you want, you hit share. It gives you a little stop sharing here you can use, and it gives you a little countdown. Now, I enabled these drawing tools to be shown. You could actually turn that off, but if you want to do some pen and markups, you can like do some neat things and you can erase some stuff, especially for math and science. This is coming really handy. If you're using a Chromebook or any kind of touch screen, just use a stylus and it's even easier to actually navigate. So you got some um, different tools you can do here. The mouse pointer is kind of nice. It just makes your mouse look a little bit. Every time you click on something, you get the little like red mark to kind of emphasize what you're actually doing. Um, that's kind of kind of neat. Uh, focus mouse, look at that. That's kind of like a little spotlight. So there's some, there's some tools here that are really useful. The problem is when you make the screencast, this box is also shown in your screencast. I wish this was only seen by you. I imagine, and you can't even really like move it, unfortunately, like I can't, if you have another screen, extend your screen out, you can't even move this. So that's one thing I don't like about it, but you can turn this off and on if you really, really want it. But now I can go anywhere I want on this Google Doc and I'm making my recordings and I am doing all of this. So it's really easy. And when you're done, you can press stop sharing here or click up here to press stop. 
and you got yourself a recording. Now, where does it go? Tab's gonna open up. And this is this is the best part about Screencastify. Now I'm at home and our Wi-Fi is just not as fast as what it might be at uh, work. Uh, but this is usually like super, super fast. And for me, this is the best part of Screencastify. I can now just hit copy shareable link. The link is copied. And now I could paste this link somewhere and I got a video that someone can actually watch later. And it's gonna take a little while to process it with Google Drive, but I can just paste that that link on a Google Doc, I can email someone that link, and I just give them access to a video instantaneously. I love that. For me, that's the best part about Screencastify is the fast workflow. Now, there's other things you can do in here though. You can rename your screencast. You know, you wanna, I'm just gonna, you know, webinar, whatever, um, right? I, you I can can't really like move. Oh. So you're hearing, you're hearing me. I can um, clip this. I can trim it. I can open the editor now, which is kind of a new feature. Let me move my face over here a little bit. I can share it to Classroom, which is really nice. I could publish this right to my YouTube page. So once you, the first time you click on this, it's going to ask you, you know, what what YouTube account you want. So I got my Keisha's EdTech account already ready to go. I got my Clarence account. I can just switch my channels. Really easy, I can switch my sharing settings as a public, private for YouTube, and I could put even a description that will already be shown. You can't enter in tags if you do a lot of tagging on YouTube for um, you know search, search aspects. You can do that later once you go into a YouTube, and you're done, you hit upload, it goes right to your YouTube channel. Super, super nice. Um, if you have your own website, you can embed it right on your website. More options, send an email, generate a QR code, Wow, that's great. You can download it, save it as an actual file if you want that instead. Um, really, really nice features. And then there's this little editor, which I don't really use that much, hardly ever. For me, Screencastify is for quick, easy, you know, you know, feedback, whatever I want to use. Okay. So it just does some magic, I guess, here. And then you could edit this a little bit more. We won't waste a lot of time on that today. But you know, there's not a lot you can do with this editor. It's real simple. Let me just um move this usually I put this on a different screen um, but you can like just do some trimming put some clips together and that's about it and I think you can actually add clips now I forgot about that you can add another clip to this screencast if you want to add another video clip that you might have saved somewhere else so that's that's kind of nice all right that's screencastify I think again that for me this is what I use the most for just really quick easy simple screencasts okay so that's the first one I want to start off with um, I guess maybe I could pause for a moment any questions about screencastify before we we move on to the next uh, e example here I don't know if there's any questions I'm sure Lauren will let me know if there's any questions so I'm assuming if there's no questions maybe nothing just yet okay that's fine and we can save them to the end if you have more questions that's that's certainly fine so the next program and again I should probably mention this this is a video this is um I put these videos together for our Canisius uh, Center for uh, Professional Development and these are a bunch of videos that I want I'd spend 15 minutes going over screencastify in even more Hello, detail I'm Ron all right so that's me, and you could watch that video if you, if you want. It's a it's about a couple years old, but it's still pretty it's still pretty relevant. It has not a lot has actually changed. Okay, so there you go. How do you screencastify? All right. Now the next one is Screencast-O-Matic, and the same thing here. This is actually a video how to use Screencast-O-Matic. If you want to use it later, go right ahead. Now um, Screencast-O-Matic is a little bit a little bit different. You can work on a Chromebook. But you gotta install it on your Chrome, but you can work on a PC. It's not an extension on your PC or MacBook. It's actually a program that you install. It's a little bit different than Screencastify. Has a little more options than Screencastify in terms of what you can do with the videos. But the only reason why I don't use it as much, I've noticed it takes a little bit longer for Screencastify to process the video and to share it. And if you have more time, you wanna make a little bit more polished screencast about maybe uh, some content, that might be the way to go because there's more options with it. But if you want quick sharing of quick, fast videos, that's why I use Screencastify. It's a little bit, it's a little bit easier. So here's the actual website for Screencast and Mac. It's been around for a while, so it's a kind of a try, tried and true sort of a tool. 
Um, they give you a lot of free options as well. So for education here, you can click on their website. Um, you know, the pricing, it kind of gives it uh, what you can use it for. They give you a lot of great ideas on how to use screencasting for flip classroom and things like that and capturing your lectures or your, your content, um, which is really kind of kind of nice. Um, I can do the pricing. I forgot what it actually is. Um, so they do like a f one dollar sixty five a month or four dollars a month for their their premium features. Um, again, there's a lot of free features that you don't need. So record for free, all of that you can you you can do. So um, you gotta just sort of like look at what they have and what's actually available for you and what what you feel is worth the actual the actual price. Um, so we have a nice, Kinesis is great because they actually have a, uh, a paid version of this. So I do use the paid version through Kinesis. I didn't buy it on my own. So I'll just kind of uh, give you that disclaimer. So I ever have it installed. So at the bottom of my screen, I didn't, sh I think you see that. Um, I have the RA ready to go. And this is the the, the program. We'll, we'll, we'll launch and it will come up a little box momentarily. I know why it's going so slow. I have a lot going on here. Because I'm also using right now a different program called Camtasia to screencast. I don't want to get into Camtasia, but Camtasia is like high-end screencasting. It's a full, full video editor. I can do a ton of effects and transitions and do all these cool things, which I love to do. But I don't want that today. I want to keep this really simple for us today. So this is the main kind of opening screen for Screencast-O-Matic. Um, I wonder if you guys can actually see this screen um, because I'm only sharing one tab at a time. Um, let me just stop sharing this and let me see. Lauren, can you see this screencast and Matic screen on your end? I can see video creation for everyone. So you don't see this little record button or anything? No. Okay, let me see if I can stop this share and I'm going to share this screen instead. Okay, there it is. All right, can you guys see this screen now? That looks like a little like video, like the, rec the, the rec record button. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Zoom's a little bit clunky with that. I got. I can only share one screen at a time, and this is technically a different screen, so I'm sorry about that. So here he goes. It, it gives you kind of a sense of the recordings that I, you've done in the past, um, and you can kind of look at other things, but you just hit the little re record button, and it's going to launch the recorder, and now it's going to record anything that's on my screen. Lauren, can you see this little like narration little bar here going up and down or not? I don't think so. All right, let me see if I can now share it some, you know, maybe if I, I'm sorry, folks, I, I'm trying to share everything with you guys. It's just a little bit acting funny. Let me see. Here it goes. Let me share this screen now. There we go. Go back to that. Can you guys see it now? The little like lines are on the screen. Yes. Okay, great. So this is what it looks like when you actually set up your screencast. So you can like move this down you can move it around this is kind of nice this is not on screencastify so you can kind of set up the portion of the screen that you want to actually record uh you know i'll give you a little tip some you if you want to ever you know record a youtube video you can screencast a youtube video and record the video maybe even netflix not that i'm saying you should do that but it does work um anyway so because you can record your screen and you can record the computer audio, which is really, really, really nice. If you are recording any videos off of your screen, you can record the, rec the video there. You can actually turn off your mic if you're ever recording video because you don't want them, you just want to get the sound from your computer. You can do that too. Now, I have the full version, so there is no time limit. I think it's a 10 minute time limit if you don't have the full version. You can do a webcam like I have right now. So there I am again. All right, or I can do both. So it's got some really cool features. I love the setup. It's got a lot of nice different aspects. And then you can press record. So I can record my screen, gives you the countdown timer, and it's the same idea, right? I can go back to this Google Doc. I can make like a recording of it, whatever I'm doing here. I can kind of click around and I can record and I can do all these great things. The bottom is kind of nice because it gives you a little countdown timer, which is really small and it's not being recorded because it's outside of this box. And that's great. And I can pause it and I can press done. And I can now upload it right away. I can share it to Google Drive. I can share it to Screencast-O-Matic, which is really kind of neat. But they have a really pretty nice little editor here 
that's pretty, it's much more involved than what you have for Screencastify. So I think I got to share a different screen now. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this. There we go. So everybody seeing this screen now? I think you are. That has the little editor here, right? Everybody got it? Yes. Is that really, really large, Lauren? Is it, is it the whole screen? Yes. Okay, cool. So this is really, really advanced. And I don't want to say too advanced, but it gives you a nice little timeline down here. You can actually insert videos anywhere you want on the timeline. There's a lot of tools down here. You can cut, you can copy, um, sorry, folks, paste. You can insert different things. You can do a narration. You want to record over something again. Maybe you want to get your voice a little bit better, right? You can do an overlay, arrows, blurred image, put text on top of stuff. I mean, really neat stuff. And we hit text. Like now, like you can actually like put text on your screencast and make little like um, pop outs. So this will be on your video. That's great if you want to like emphasize something, highlight something. This is what you see in a much higher end video editor like Camtasia. You can do all of this. So you can really make some professional, nice looking screencasts at a fairly reasonable cost. Like a program like Camtasia, which is a really high end one, it will run you, the education one runs you about $150. I mean, it's expensive programs. Um, I use it because I actually do work for TechSmith, so they take care of me and they've, they've, they've given me free versions of their stuff because I do a lot of work for them um, promoting their, their products. But this is nice for like a $2 a month little sub subscription. So that's really kind of, kind of cool. Um, and you can like insert other things like transitions and different kind of fades and like really kind of neat stuff between like your clips, right? You want to like do a rotation thing. It will like rotate your screen. So I think if we play down here, um, I get to this point in the editor, let's just play it. Let's see what that actually did. The play of the screen. It, whatever I'm doing here, and I can kind of click around. And I, can I mean, record, it just threw in some cool effects, right? So there's a lot of really neat features in terms of what this has. Um, they even have music. Let me get out of here. You can insert music. It, there's like a whole little like music library. Let me say okay for that. Um, sorry, this gets in the way. Let me move this on top now. <laughs> All right, here, here we go. Um, so I can do music even, and there's really fun stuff. Let me get out of this. Sorry, I keep on um, hitting different things here. Um, but your tool screen, there's like you can adjust the volume, which is really cool. So you want maybe your voice was too loud in certain spots. Over here is your music button. I'm, I'm over here on, on this side, and there's they got a lot of stock music that they already have ready to go, or you can import your own music. So you can add music behind your screencast, really do a lot of nice stuff. So this one's a little bit more involved, but I think if you really get into it, this might be one to explore. I think Screencastify is your entry level one, and then screencast and matic if you wanna do some more uh, intricate screencasts, you could really um, do that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna like stop sharing this screen, and let's get back to, um, a different screen share here. Get we have back. a couple questions too. Oh, great. Let's go back to some questions. Awesome. So the first one is, can anyone use the Canisius version? Uh, no, I mean, we have a, a paid version through the college, um, but you can go to Screencast, go to Screencast Nomadic and you can look at their pricing, but um, you know, it, it's fairly, you know, reasonable, I guess, for what you get here. So if you just go to this website, um, you can just download it right now and you'll have the free version, which won't have a lot of the editing features, but you can still do a lot of nice screencasts. Uh, and then if you wanted to pay the dollar or whatever it was a month, dollar sixty, dollar eighty a month, you can do that. Maybe if you have some funds for your school, they would be willing to do that as well as a purchase order. Okay, and another question. I'm having trouble exporting MS PowerPoint slideshows into movie format. Uh, I'm a Mac user. The PowerPoint slideshow file looks great, but not all students have access to PowerPoint at home, I suspect. Yes. Any comment on that? Yeah, and that's a great comment. So what's nice about the screencasting tools is that it doesn't matter. So if you bring up your PowerPoint and you start your slideshow and then you open up Screencastify, you can go through the, the show and you can do your narration and go through all your slides. Same thing for Google Slide users. And the only thing that you're going to give your students then 
they're just going to get a recording. It's just going to be a video file that they can that that can be used on any device. They can watch it on their phones. They can watch it on their laptop. They can watch it on whatever. So that's I think the benefit of screencasting. I I haven't really. That's another discussion. I, I've gone on a Microsoft diet for about you know like eight years. I haven't even touched any of their stuff. I'm totally immersed in Google um, slides and so forth. But I know there's ways to like, export you know PowerPoint slides as videos. This takes care of all that problem because what you're doing is you're just recording your screen and you're just sharing out a, a, a video file that anyone can actually watch. Hope that answers your question. That's it for right now. Okay. All right. So we're going to kind of now shift gears into something that's a little bit different. And um, what I have here is something that's called Flipgrid. So if you want to engage your students, you want to interact with them, they, you want to see them and they want to see you, you can do screencasts, right? You can do all that. But Flipgrid is another video tool, which is really nice, where you can set up video discussions with your students and they can reply by video. You can reply back to their videos. Other students in your class can respond to their videos. You can have a complete, almost like virtual web meeting, but not in real time. So here's, I know a lot of schools are doing this, right? Even my school, they say, hey, do you want to talk to your students? Go to Google Meet or use this tool, Zoom, that we're using. Have like a web conference. That's great. My wife, second grade teacher, tonight, she's going to have one with her students at seven o'clock. They're going to read stories together. But not all students can meet at the same time. And what I like about Flipgrid, now the term for this is called asynchronous. It's something we talk about in our online learning classes. Asynchronous online learning is where students can contribute when they want to. Instructors can then give feedback when they want to, but you can still kind of have this give and take back and forth, but you're only really watching it when you have the time to watch it. Synchronous learning is what we're doing right now. We're all meeting together at the same time, the same spot. We're all on this video chat, which is great. But sometimes synchronous learning isn't convenient for all students, right? We know that now parents are home working. What happens if mom and dad are using the laptop and, you know, little Jimmy can't because he his mom is using it now. So he, he's got to log on later. And there's a lot of juggling going on right now, right? So Flipgrid, I think, is a great solution to this. And here's the here's the link to what Flipgrid is all about. And what's great about Flipgrid is that Microsoft bought it and they have, I, sh I guess I lied. I haven't gone on a complete Microsoft diet because I use Flipgrid. Um, but Microsoft has given everybody, educators, the full, the full version for free. There is no cost to this and it's the full version, which is awesome. Um, that wasn't the way it was a couple years ago. And they have now added tons of resources on remote learning now because everybody's like using these tools now because they're scrambling. So educator signups are real easy. You enter in your, your school credentials and you get it right, right away. And then there's this great like educator login where you can now log into Flipgrid and you can create classes. So let me kind of run through this. Let me get this out of the way. Usually I have second screen and this is annoying me. All right, there we go. All right, so right now I'm in the educator dashboard at Flipgrid and I use Flipgrid with my Keisha's EdTech graduate students and I also use it with my high school students. So, and you can use this with elementary school students, with middle school students, doesn't matter what grade, doesn't matter what subject, it's really easy to actually use, all right? Now, um, you can go through all this. What they have is grids, and grids are kind of like a class, if you want to call it that, or maybe like your, um, if you're teaching a, a course that has multiple sections, it would be the course, okay? Um, so I teach a lot of classes for ed tech here, obviously, and you can see that all of our classes, I've been using this for now a couple of years, and our graduate students love it because it takes the impersonal aspects away from online learning where you're just not posting text on a screen. You're seeing each other. We're getting to know each other. We reply back and forth through through uh, videos. So it's really kind of nice and it's really easy to actually share. Um, you can share out a whole class, this little share button, really nice. A URL link or even a QR code because the app works great on Android and iOS. And I want to show you my phone, but I'm not sure if my connection is going to be strong enough to actually do that. Um, but you can just scan the app, scan the QR code with the, with the app, and it brings you right into it. It's super engaging, really kind of nice. Um, so it's really easy to kind of set up. And there's a lot of options here, which I can kind of mess around with, but just keep it simple for today. So this is actually from last week, our module two in OTT 501. 
And what I do is I create these. So I make the graphic in another program. I like doing graphics. Um, I was once an inspiring art student and just didn't go that, that, that route. I went, got a history PhD instead. Um, but anyway, um, so it's fun just to kind of like design some, some stuff and you can like design anything you want or import images to make, give it like a pop here. But I'll show you an example in a second. I upload our action sheets right here. So this is the same action sheet I just showed you before. Um, so students can get content right from Flipgrid. And on that same action sheet, which I showed you before, um, here's our, we're doing a post this week, right? And I'm having students write out a really in-depth researched post about a topic where it's gotta be cited, multiple paragraphs, and they're gonna post that to Schoology, right? But then I want them to talk to each other. I want them to see each other in an online course. So they're also gonna make a video post on um, Flipgrid. So I kind of give you the example. So here's this module two in uh, Schoology. And they have this, this is their discussion for that week. And they're like posting all these like really in-depth like discussion posts. See like their multiple paragraph APA cited and all this great, great stuff. But then I want them to make a video where they kind of just talk a little more casually about something, right? So these are all their little like comments and their posts. And um, you know, I've gotten permission, like, you know, we can kind of like talk about this. So here's Alyssa, here's her post. You know, she's Hi everyone, home. I hope we're all staying safe and I'm um, not going to really crazy with this whole um, closure. Everybody's kind of responding to each other now. There's a reply. Um, she's replying to Caitlin. To here's my it. reply. Hi, let's hope you're doing really well. Um, it's uh, crazy time. For reply. So, I mean, we're all talking to each other. Then she replied back to all of us. So you can have a complete video discussion on your own time and on your okay, own Okay, so terms. strictly just talking about the and essential question can, that was asked this week was like, what from the readings? Shock. And you can set up rubrics on this if you want from a teacher standpoint and do a lot of cool things to kind of like grade it. So it's really kind of fun and really kind of easy. And it's a great way to kind of still engage students with, with video if a video conference like this isn't feasible, all right? And it's kind of a really nice, nice, nice thing. Let me um, share a different screen with you because I want to share with you um, my high school students. So Lauren's going to get mad at me because I'm showing a Niagara University symbol. Why, why am I doing that? So I teach at Clarence High School, but I teach a course on American military history. And my course my students actually get credit through Niagara University for a three credit hour course. Um, this is a course I designed years ago, taught at UB, taught at Niagara, and I teach it at Clarence now for all my high school students and they get college credit. So three credits and it's only like $225. So it's a really great, great program they have there at Niagara. Keisha, let's, let's get on board with this. Anyway, so um, so we're, uh, we're, we have this, uh, here's our module. This is our first module completely online. So this just started this past week. I made them an action sheet. I took it right from my experiences with Clarence, with 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 Kinesius. I made a video of my action sheet. Um, I put it on our YouTube channel, so it's really accessible. Um, they're doing some stuff in Edpuzzle. They're posting to Schoology and Flipgrid. So this is stuff that we've done in class, but never completely online. I got some students logged in right now, doing their doing their work. I can see their little initials. Um, so this was kind of a fun thing. I hope we're all get into it. So I, we're doing a World War One unit. So I want them to post videos, in their comments. So I made a discussion in Schoology, but I told them don't post here. But here are all the Flipgrid directions. So there it all is. They can go to this Flipgrid, this Flipgrid, this Flipgrid. Each period, I teach four sections of this particular uh, one. And each class, I can go now view their, their Flipgrid. So I can go into this discussion. There it is. And I made this little fun you know, graphic, chapter one, World War One. There are the questions I want them to consider. And they're, they're all posting. Now you can make a fun little like, you know, Snapchat, like screenshot. People are replying to each other already. I gotta go in now and get in here and reply to these people too, which now online learning is fun, but it's also very time intensive if I'm gonna reply to all these folks, right? So um, really kind of neat way to engage students, okay? So let me just run you through a really quick example of how you make one of these, okay? So um, let me go back to my Kenesha screen, okay? Sorry about that, okay. There we go. So let me get out of this. It's pretty easy. Um, go back to my grid here. And uh, it's really kind of fun. You can just add a brand new topic when you're in your grid, your, your, your class. And I'll just call this like a test topic. 
and you can set the recording limits a minute 30 seconds 15 seconds five minutes um, so whatever you want it to be for students you can type anything you want here like directions you can add links this is where I put my action sheet you can put directions in here you can upload a video to kind of explain what the topics all about which is really kind of kind of neat um, that's really kind of fun and uh, you know that's pretty much it so more options whatever you want topic tip you can do attachments URLs you can moderate the replies if you are afraid people are gonna be posting things that are inappropriate you can be a moderator and see it before you let it to be public you can allow or disallow students to reply to each other um, so there's a lot of kind of neat things you can make your own rubrics here really kind of kind of fun all right now from a student standpoint how does it actually look so let me go back to my classes oops sorry I'm in my my grids here and I can go back to this one and I can view it let's view it as a student so we've already did module one so here's the view as a student uh, that's what it actually looks like and it shows you who responded and who replied and then you just hit the little plus button and now you could gotta log in. I'll log in really quickly here and hopefully, whatever. It doesn't matter which account I actually use because they're both school accounts. And this is how it actually looks now. So this is your screen. Here I am. It's really easy. You just can press record and start talking. You can also upload an audio or a video clip that you've already made if you want to do that instead, uh, which is really kind of nice. You can actually, if you're on your phone, you could turn it around. You actually, you could record, you know, what you want to record from the outside, which is really, really fun. You, there's all these filters you can play around with, black and white, you know, whatever, no filter. You could add text on your screen. You know, if you want someone to like, you know, put a text here, you can you can add it. There's all these little stickers you can add on your screen, which a lot of times students do. Um, a lot of fun things, kind of more like a Snapchat feature. You can draw on your screen. Uh, you can have a whole whiteboard and draw on your screen if you want photo stickers just really cool cool stuff so we can even put notes sticky notes if you want not sure what you want to talk about really kind of fun um this shows the topic that i just already you know there's my action sheets so it's all kind of here embedded here for you which is really kind of kind of nice let me turn that off so i'll just be quick recording test gives you a little countdown one two three hi everyone we're going to talk about this today blah 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 and when you're done you hit next you can also pause it and go back. Hi to it. everyone, we're going to talk about this today. Blah blah blah. And when you you can add more, you can edit it before you actually go with it, and then you hit next, and then you make a little selfie, and you can add stickers to your selfie and have some fun, and you smile, and then that's it. And now your your video is now on. You could add links here for other work, and your video is now on Flipgrid. That's great. You can download the video and download the selfie. Super, super nice. So there's my video, um, which they're going to be like, hi, everyone. We're going to talk about this today, blah, blah, blah. Really, really easy, right? So really fun, really easy. The phone app, I'm having some problems getting the connections to work on my phone to show you the uh, the uh, phone screen of it. Um, I'm not sure I'll get to actually go. Um, but it really, really works very well. I'll try my phone one more time, see if I can get this to work on my phone. Um, make a share up my phone screen so you can kind of see from the app standpoint how this actually works but I think I have too much stuff run here at one time at home so it's not gonna uh, be cooperating but that's okay you, I think you get the uh, gist of it um, before I turn over questions there are some things I just kind of wanted to show you in terms of how you can get really into a uh, screencasting um, let me stop this share I want to go back to my other screen um, because I had some just examples up of different screencasts so real real quick this is what I called uh, DK's my students call me DK Dr. Kyle like just kind of a short nickname I've had for years so I do these live screencasts in school um, but then I put a fun little intro into it and then we kind of go from there so this is like a little intro I, I made back to the future I used to love that movie as a kid so get it, we're going back in time we're, we're going back to like you know the future so I put a little montage of some of those early clips it's a little long but then it's me and there's a little intro. So for a debate introduction. This was just screencasted live in my class. 
Oh, let's get started then. Guys, today, 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 um, we're going to get right into it. Um, today's kind of an important day. I want to talk about our debate for the very first time. So, it was our debate instructions. Here's what I made years ago that's actually still being used. I don't teach AP World anymore, uh, but when I did, I made all these screencasts for a flipped classroom. Well, the teachers who are still teaching AP World actually still use this. So, this is a little bit more in depth. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another video of AP World History. Look a little different back then. During our last video, like, we discussed Seven the classical ago? empire. We talked about why they were called the classical, why they were innovative, why they. So I go as a little intro piece. How about something this... like nomadic invasion or internal disputes or unequal distribution of land? And, we'll... and so hopefully then I had this little cool intro. And then there was like, oh, it's all for each world, and it was just fun. And they wanted to take each world. So I guess I do with Cantina. It goes into like, you know, what we're actually doing. It's just a slideshow. So back to that Empires. person's questions about slideshows and can you do this? Is all just a PowerPoint slide? Then I just re recorded as of Terry strength, and we were good to go. More. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So at this point, let me go back to my original screen because I want to show you one more thing in the Google Doc before we say goodbye. Um, I add a couple of resources here for you. So let's get back to this Google Doc and I'll answer some questions. Some people always ask me about, about microphones. You know, I had kind of a, a Amazon search here of just simple USB microphones if you wanna do one. Um, I have a little bit of a nicer microphone because I do a lot of this, but a simple even $20 mic is great. I tell you the truth, my mic and my Chromebook is great. I don't even need a microphone, my internal mic, so you just never know. It depends on, what, on your device. If you wanna get more audio files to kinda of have some fun with, this is a really cool place called the YouTube Audio Library where you can download like free music and even like sound effects and you can kind of add those to your screencast if you really wanna kinda of get into it. Um, and you can search it by category, kind of a really fun place to search for free music to download that's royalty free. And um, again, if you want to learn more about our education technology program, this is our website. We're always looking for new students, new candidates. You can be any subject, any grade level. If you need a master's to get your permanent certification, we're here for you. We do count. And then you can get another certification. You can be dual certified in your content area and also be certified as an ed tech specialist in New York State. Fantastic. I made this website about our certifications, but I want to show you one part of it. These are all the certifications we do. We do Google certifications and flip learning. But I added this tab last week for my teachers at both Clarence and actually at Canisius, how to, how to do stuff. So if you want to know more about screencasting, advanced screencasting, these are all videos I made. How to do Google Hangouts, I made these videos. Just education tools like Schoology and Cami and Flipgrid. So that's all there for you. So check that out for sure and use those if you, if you like. If you want to know more about what students think about our program, there's a great video of student testimonials, video that we made a little bit about our program, and I made this video recently about what it's like to be in an online course. So you can learn about all of our stuff at our great graduate programs at Canisius. So any, any last questions before we say goodbye today? Yes. So what types of categories do you use on a rubric for a Flipgrid discussion? Yeah, so what I still use though is I use a standard rubric for both uh, Kenesha's and for um, my Clarence students. And I made this rubric in Schoology where you know I, I'm looking for the in-depth of their comments, their responses. Um, for history class, for me especially, are they using text examples? Um, are they making references to text? Are they quoting texts? So I think you could really gear it towards your content area certainly uh, and really what works best for you. Um, I, I imagine if you really got into this, you could create a whole scale of, you know, even with responses, like I have a whole category here for responses. Did they respond to other folks in the class? And then not just like a, oh, great point, but was it like a neat, was it an in-depth response? Did it, did it, did it ask a question or did it further a point or did it refute a point? Something along those lines. I think you could really build a nice rubric that students can kind of see and then they can kind of feel better at this. So for my high school students, we have in-class discussions all the time, every 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 week, and they, they're graded. And I went over that rubric with them. And we're kind of basically using the exact same rubric now in an online format. 
Another question, will you share this video recording when you finish so we can share with staff? Yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this recording and give me tomorrow, maybe I'll process it and I'll put it like somewhere up the top here that you guys can see it on this Google Doc. If you have any other questions, you can use the Q&A box on your screen. Well, I really hope this was useful for you. I hope you got some tips you can now use this week, today, tomorrow, as we all make these transitions and these uh, challenging times. So that was really the, uh, the uh, goal of this. Really simple, quick tips to use to hopefully engage your students now from a distance. Doesn't look like there are any other questions right now. Okay. Um, but Ron's email is on the screen too. So if you think of something a little bit later, um, his email is right there. And you will also receive a certificate of completion for attending today's webinar. So keep an eye on your email next week for that, as well as links to our upcoming web webinars. And we want to thank you so much, Ron, for presenting today. Oh, thank you, Lauren, so much. And thank you, everyone, for taking some time out of your day. I'm sure you're already tired of looking at your screens all day, but we appreciate uh, you joining us this afternoon, too.